this week on Before the Big One, I'm seriously starting con to consider whether I should change the name to something like what I made this week because that's all I've been doing <laughs> and that's a thing that I've gotten far more footage on than any of my other actually oh go do this interesting fun thing. This week <laughs> I ended up doing a lot of knitting. I call it knitting, a lot of people call it cheating. <laughs> I use a loom. It's a lot easier, it's a lot faster, in my opinion it takes far less time and a lot less concentration too. Uh, so it's great for me. This one is one of my favorites, especially for scarves because you can double up and it'll lay flat. I am going to be doing the pattern that I've kind of made up for the Newt Scamander from the uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them series. Is it really a series if there are only two? There are only two right now. From my understanding, there are supposed to be three more. So you go around the first time and then you push all of these guys down and you do it again. Um, the pattern that I made up is very simple in my opinion. You choose how many rows that you want each color to have and then you just do that over and over and over until it's the length that you want. I tend to do um, blocks of either 10 or 15. When I start and when I finish I tend to do five more. So if I want each uh, block to have 10 um, rows I'll start with 15 and end with 15. Um, I do gray and then alternate gray and this gold color until I get to the end and I end it with gray again. Use one of these guys. They typically come in the kit with the loom. Um, I've used a lot of these and I've lost a lot of them. Um, I've gotten used to also doing this part with a pen. It is very difficult initially, but then once you get into the swing of it, you kind of start going and you, you just kind of go. The only downside, in my opinion, to using a pen is that this section right here, this little divot that you have here that helps you get this guy into it, it starts to get discolored from the ink of the pen, and then also it will start to get um, worn because you're not supposed to be using a pen. <laughs> so basically, you go around like that, and then you push it down, and you go around, and you flip them over. It's um, kind of something to do with your hands while you're watching a movie or a TV show or something like that. Um... I really like this because it's portable and you can basically take it with you and do it anywhere.
also be using this guy. Um, this is the largest circular loom that I have that came with um, the kit that I got. Um, I use it for hats, particularly the slouchy ones that there are markings. These are, are black, but these are the markings that you get when you use a pen. And if you'll also see that some bits of this are frayed from digging in too deep with the pen. That's what happens when you you lose your tool. What I will be working on is a Gryffindor inspired hat, like a, a slouchy beanie. Um, I will be using this burgundy color and then that same gold color that I used for the Newt scarf. The next scarf I'm going to be working on is a Slytherin scarf. I'm going to be using a Kelly Green color in this very light gray. So the pattern that I tend to do, uh, Harry Potter house inspired scarves, is um, I will either do a 10 or 15 again. Um, again, like the Newt scarf that I do. I will add five to each end just to make it look a little bit more consistent. I think I just was watching the movie. I was like, oh, that'd be really easy to replicate. I think the first two, they have just solid block scarves like the Newt scarf that I did, um, where it's just block of green, block of gray, block of green, block of gray, block of green. Um, and then I think it was the third movie where they got more um, sophisticated with some of their uh, costuming choices where they decided to do the predominant color of the house uh, for the majority of it and then do just small stripes of the gray. And so I decided that I would do... Um, 15 or 20. I would do 15 to start at the, the bottom, 15, and then I would do two rows of gray, two rows of green, two rows of gray, and then 10. And then I would repeat that however many times I felt until I got to the very end where I would do two rows of gray, two rows of green, two rows of gray, and then the end 15. I'm going to go ahead and continue working on this and I'm gonna probably just fast forward to the end result because it's not really that much fun to watch. Here we go. These actually aren't 
for me. I, I tend to make these for either people that I plan to gift them to or to like sell. Um, I managed to do not one but two of these slouchy hats in that time. They're kind of cute in my opinion. Um, very Gryffindor but a lot of people are Gryffindors so like I said it's a slouchy kind of hat. It's very lightweight. It looks like this. Cute! And I do like the red color but it's very Gryffindor and not me. I was also able to get a Newt's Commander inspired scarf complete. I'm not sure if this is really how he wears it in the film or not. Oh well. It is roughly as long as I am tall. Getting wrapped around a couple of times. Be super sophisticated. Um, and then I also got a Slytherin scarf done. It's a lot of effort. <laughs> it's, it's rather, it's not super long. Uh, I've done a couple of Doctor Who scarves and those are huge. Those are 20 feet long, I think. The, the one that I have done and that I have up on, on my store, on my Etsy shop, is 21 feet long, I think. And it has a mix of something like 10 different colors. This is a Slytherin scarf that I've done. And I have the other houses too. I was meaning to do uh, a Ravenclaw. I didn't have all of my stuff. I could have swore I had a whole skein of navy. They didn't, and that is the main color for Ravenclaw, so you can't do it without it. Yeah, so hopefully um, next week I will have something a little bit more engaging for you. If not, then I will try my best to find something. Um, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a great day.